Dr. Agarwal, my valued colleague, Deputy Director General Education at the ICAR, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. D.R. Singh, Chandrasekhar Rajad, University of Agriculture and Technology, Deans, Directors, other seats of the university, including registrar, dear faculty members, students, and I'm sure there will be the entrepreneur, young entrepreneurs, representatives of press and media, ladies and gentlemen. A very good. Uh, morning to each one of you. We are still in the morning. And at the outset, let me express my sincere thanks to Dr. D.R. Singh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, for inviting me for today's program. Dr. D.R. Singh has been for quite some time insisting that we should be having the program. And in fact, uh, I had in my mind to come over to Kanpur physically and be there with you all, to meet you, to greet you. And you all know that the COVID pandemic has isolated us physically. It has been punishing quite a torturous time. And more than one and a half years now, everyone is under the fear of COVID. COVID has played also havoc this year during April, May. Many valuable lives, young lives were lost to COVID. And that was something which was very, very painful. So I take this opportunity, this occasion, to pay tribute to all of them who lost their lives in our fraternity, whether in State Agriculture University, working or retired, or in the Indian Council of Agriculture Research. And this is uh, the time to also have some kind of support and also early action on all their dues and everything paid immediately without any hassles. And if you have similar such cases, and I hope and I believe that you have already done it. And if not, by because of some reason, it's uh, delayed. So kindly ensure that it's all done. We have to also see how best we can help the families within the ambit of rules and guidelines. And we should look for opportunities for us to support the needy families who have lost their serving members in the family. I have seen the colleagues and who have left us very bright ones, and I've seen their families, 
is really a very, very difficult time. The COVID fear still continues and uh, we ha all have to remain careful and continue to be on a lot, high a lot, wearing of masks is the most important requirement. The precautionary measure that would save us not only from COVID, but also other viral kind of infections which are happening now and which are airborne. So I'm sure you all, when you move to office and other common places, would be wearing the masks. And frequent hand hygiene is again another important one. I urge all of you colleagues and friends. I believe there are almost 160, 170 people associated with this program today. And I thank you very much for joining this program. Thanks, uh, Vice Chancellor Sir, for arranging this and inviting all colleagues. It's always a pleasure to talk to colleagues, but it's also painful to lose valuable colleagues our partners in our office environment. So, so I urge all of you once again, not to low down the guard, not to uh, be uh, relaxed and, uh, all, and particularly not to leave the precautionary measures, uh, you know, uh, particularly uh, at home is perfectly all right. Uh, you know, in your office room may be perfectly all right, but uh, not in uh, gatherings and uh, common places. Of course, the distance uh, maintenance of uh, distance, appropriate distance has been highlighted and uh, that's also should be followed. But given the, uh, you know, airborne nature, and aerosolic transfer of uh, virus particles. You know, this distance, uh, you know, uh, uh, may not be very effective, but still, so I would urge con uh, to continue observing these precautionary measures and not only you, but also urge uh, you to actually convince everybody at home uh, to be careful, to stay careful, to continue to be careful uh, for at least uh, as long as the threats persist. So that would be my first request uh, today. Uh, in, uh, uh, and uh, there could be other suggestions, but this should be first one. Dr. Dear Singh Sav, I'm sure you would be taking campus uh, measures and uh, all that which is required. And also, you know, if you have nearby schools, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's always a, 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 you know, a good occasion to interact with the school children and uh, talk to them and inform them, educate them uh, along with the teachers. And uh, so, so that is always uh, useful. Uh, so please continue doing this and have a clean and green campus always and so that the mosquitoes don't breed there. And today I heard that uh, colleagues, many dear, uh, dear ones are getting infected with dengue. So dengue is, is another uh, disease which is threatening. So, so kindly take care. The university has been, uh, you know, at the forefront on various facets of uh, agricultural research, education, and extension. It's a old university has uh, uh, given stalwarts, uh, at least some of those who studied there uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, taught there. So some of the stalwarts uh, the university has given us. Uh, the university continues to produce bright uh, students. And uh, today we have seen uh, the uh, young scholars and students, uh, you know, uh, establishing startups 
And that was something which, is, which was uh, very much appreciated. And I congratulate uh, Mr. Kartab Verma uh, for this, uh, this uh, fit by startup. And uh, uh, also Mr. Sivam Tiwari and uh, Mr. Manish Pandey uh, uh, for the green resident enterprises. Uh, these are uh, beautiful examples of student startups. Uh, in fact, uh, this, uh, you know, we have been discussing, the Agrawal would remember that this is what is precisely was emphasized by the, uh, you know, a higher office, uh, including Honorable Agriculture Minister and others. Uh, so so they, they have been emphasizing that uh, and our, uh, my presentation before Honorable Prime Minister and subsequent to that, the monitoring process, uh, you know, they have been emphasizing uh, on uh, student entrepreneurship. And that is where we have been talking about student ready program and so on and so forth. But such examples of students going for establishing startups and successfully demonstrating that how students can contribute to entrepreneurship building and in the process, you know, become job givers instead of being job seekers. And this slogan we have been giving, but these are two uh, examples where the students have become uh, job givers. So Dr. Agarwal Saab, it is time we actually, uh, you know, have documentation of such success stories across universities. And uh, Student Ready is operating since 2016, and five years are gone. And this is the time to do a critical evaluation of entrepreneurship building and how rural entrepreneurship awareness development yojana has been operating and how successful it is. And we have documented student ready program, but I believe the documentation of these kind of examples, successful examples of entrepreneurship would be a uh, you know, excellent uh, idea to uh, uh, first of all have it, and second, you know, it would be encouragement to those students who have gone for entrepreneurship because their names would be documented there, it would be circulated all across the country and to all organizations, libraries, and also many people. So it would be advertisement for them as well. And for our own purpose, I believe it would be useful to measure and assess how successful our student ready program has been and how successful it is and what way we can make it more successful if there are some lacunae and if there are some bottlenecks that we would like to address as early as possible. So I, I request Dr. Agarwal Saab, you, you know, in the VC conference, this should be one agenda for discussion so that all the honorable vice chancellors are requested to build this up and provide us information so that we build this document. So this is, uh, you know, important. And these examples are, uh, you know, uh, not many. I am sure there are not many. Uh, it would be maybe in hundreds at the most, if not thousands. Uh, so, uh, so at least, uh, you know, a few hundred could be there. And uh, let's uh, do this. It's a huge uh, downpour here. So uh, this voice, I hope it is reaching you. And uh, uh, so this is one aspect I thought we should really be taking uh, you know, action. Based on what uh, is uh, seen today, what was heard today, and for that, I congratulate you, Vice Chancellor Saab, and all your faculty who are involved in this particular program. And uh, you know, we always say that, okay, there are limitations in the universities, there are certain uh, kind of deficiencies, but there are many areas of success 
And in fact, uh, you know, we must take advantage of the strengths that we have in our university system. And uh, it's a big strength. Uh, and uh, we are together. It's a, uh, you know, kind of win-win uh, situation for us. And I'm sure our togetherness uh, has given us rich dividends in the past. And if we continue doing this, certainly we'll be getting far more richer dividends. But anyway, so before coming to uh, you know, concluding statements, let me spend a few minutes. And then uh, what you have uh, shown us, uh, Dr. D.R. Singh Sahib, that it's not just inauguration of the facilities, but inaugurating the future of agriculture, strengthening the future of agriculture by way of having such facilities, and uh, strengthening agriculture and agricultural infrastructure uh, for uh, enhanced operations and activities with regard to research, with regard to education, with regard to extension, all are so critical. And uh, our universities are older now and getting older further. And if new infrastructure is, in, is not really built, so obviously universities would be outdated. And this is one thing I think we should remember. And this one point we should be, Dr. Agrawal Saab, we should be also writing to the state governments and uh, discussing in our regional committee meetings when the uh, department uh, officers join, uh, agriculture secretaries and others, that this is also the responsibilities of the state. This is a partnership we have been supporting and the states also should be forthcoming. And they have been supporting in many, many states. And Uttar Pradesh is a beautiful example where the Honorable Agriculture Minister has been very supportive of university and KVK system. So, so this uh, is a very, very important point. If there are issues and concerns, we should learn this in our VC conference so that we are able to address this. Because infra modern infrastructure is, essential, uh, is an essential component of uh, you know, uh, quality research and quality education. And unless we build that, uh, we would be faltering. So in that context, again, Dr. Uh, uh, you know, uh, D.R. Singh Saab and your colleagues, hearty congratulations for building these successfully, these, uh, these infrastructures and uh, you know, getting them inaugurated and making them functional in the process. So getting inaugurated means making them functional. And uh, there are instances where the facilities are initiated and it takes many, many long years to complete them. Yeah. And uh, you know, in the process, the very advantage we are supposed to derive out of these infrastructure is actually not done. And we fail in that respect. So, so congratulations to you and your colleagues for this inauguration. And uh, thanks for giving us the opportunity to be part of this. And uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, uh, uh, many more such facilities would be coming up in the future. And uh, with our support and also with the support of the state governments in various formats and through the various schemes, uh, it should be happening. And uh, continue striving to build university infrastructure. And that would be my suggestion that please continue and prepare the list of all those essential items which are required. And I'm happy that you have also smart classroom. And uh, you know, our Honorable Minister of Agriculture dedicated smart classrooms uh, you know, uh, uh, a month or two ago uh, to the nation. And uh, you know, uh, so this is, uh, uh, these are the examples. So plan it out and then uh, on a hunt for uh, you know, such uh, ideas and also in the process, uh, uh, you know, go for sourcing funds uh, to establish those. And I believe everything takes time. So I'm sure with your involved engagement, you should be able to really uh, enrich uh, the university further. Uh, the university has been, uh, you know, as I said, contributing to uh, the agricultural developments in the state, but also uh, in the country. Uh, as you have uh, mentioned, uh, more than 300 varieties of crops uh, have been developed by the university and also uh, more than 500 different agrotechnics 
uh, have been developed by the university. So uh, credit goes to the faculties, not just those who are working today, those who have uh, worked earlier and uh, no more in service. So credit goes to every one of them. So I congratulate all of them. And uh, uh, not only that, they have developed this for India, for the, uh, for the state, but also as I uh, you know, learned uh, that uh, some of them have gone uh, to uh, various uh, other uh, countries, including uh, Nepal, Bangladesh. So our uh, kind of neighboring countries are also growing your varieties and full credit goes to you, uh, the, uh, all the authorities of the uh, university and also the previous authorities who have played significant role in developing these varieties and also promoting them. So, so heartiest congratulations to you all for all these uh, very significant milestones uh, in the history of uh, the university. Uh, you say that uh, you know, the first patent is granted to the university for flux fiber extraction technology. And uh, this is something which is very, very important. We are importing flux uh, linen and uh, you know, this is uh, where we need to go for import substitution. And how do we really plan import substitution adequately? Uh, we must really focus on this, go full swing, and have a full place program. Government of India is interested, and in, uh, not only promoting cultivation, and but also uh, you know uh, the extraction technology was a limitation. And if you have this technology available, and uh, long fibers can be extracted high quality fibers can be extracted. And I'm sure uh, we should be able to really go for import substitution. So uh, VC Saab, this would be another suggestion that plan it out, study the whole issue uh, in its entirety, and then see where are the bottlenecks and how can we address uh, this issue and go for import substitution. You don't have to grow huge areas, but uh, you know, uh, I'm told that uh, cooler climates is better. I'm not sure, but I have very little understanding of this. And you can study it better and then see, you know, how your technology, fiber extraction technology can be of use wherever it is grown and uh, how effectively. And you can talk to uh, VPK's uh, uh, Almora. You can talk to our, uh, you know, Kryzaf and have a meeting and under your chairmanship, and uh, invite those directors of Kryzaf and then Almora, and then see uh, you know, how best, what is the real issue and ADG uh, commercial crops could be invited and Dr. R.K. Singh, and uh, you can conduct this meeting and then see what are the requirements and how much we can produce and uh, how to have industry partnership and uh, who all industries would be interested and so that we build this. And if you succeed in one, you don't have to really do 20 things. If you can do one, which is most essentially required for the country, your job is done. In addition to solving the, solving the regional problems and addressing the regional issues. So this is one uh, example I'm citing based on your own work, and I'm sure you'll be able to really do this. And you have also, I learned that developed, uh, you know, biofertilizers and biopesticides. So, Mrs. Saab, you know, this is the time where the central government and several state governments are promoting organic farming. And organic farming, you know, has also its own limitations because organic farming would be less productive. Organic farming can be very, very detrimental to the economy of the countries. And there are some reports with regard to uh, Sri Lanka in recently in newspapers. Uh, you know, that is what is, uh, you know, uh, the point which I have to, uh, you know, uh, uh, really uh, emphasize. And, uh, you know, if that is the case, how organic farming can be and, uh, uh, you know, made beneficial and uh, uh, productive enough so that farmers uh, don't really lose out, country doesn't lose out. So in that context, use of biopesticides and uh, biofertilizers are uh, very, very crucial. And if you have such uh, you know, kind of uh, products, biofertilizers and biopesticides, and uh, you know, not just uh, here and there demonstrating 
few districts and few demonstrations. We have to go much beyond. I would urge all my scientist colleagues who are uh, you know, attending today, kindly take note of this. Our work cannot remain confined to the laboratories. We have been taking credit for very good publications and I congratulate you, Dr. Dr. Singh Saab, you have increased publications uh, almost uh, you know, uh, three, four folds and from 40, 45 to 160 or something that you said. So, uh, so that is uh, something which is remarkable. And I congratulate once again, you and your colleagues, uh, it, you know, those who have done a fantastic job and increasing publication. And also I, I believe that some of them are very good publications. Yeah. And you should see where in terms of NAS rating these publications stand and how do you improve uh, you know, on that further. And that's another action point for you uh, that, uh, you know, continuously be after that, keep analyzing, and then how many are, are above NASA rating, seven, for instance, or eight, and then uh, how do you, you improve upon that? And, uh, you know, that actually reflects the quality of our uh, publications. Uh, the NAS uh, rated journals, they are, uh, you know, they have certain uh, kind of uh, methods uh, to rate them. So obviously we can actually take advantage of that rating process to have quality control in our own, uh, you know, uh, universities and uh, in the process increase our people to better work and also publish in peer reviewed journals, uh, which have better standings internationally. So, so that is what I would urge you and also request all the colleagues who are associated today. We all are together and we have to work together and uh, not just for delivering the goods at the farmer's field, that's essential, but also establishing ourselves science-based, evidence-based and science-led institutions. And uh, you know, all our technologies are evidence uh, based on ev scientific evidences. So that requires high quality publications. So, so Honorable Prime Minister talks about bridging the gap between uh, lab to land, and there are gaps. So I was talking about biopesticides and biofertilizers, and uh, we have been able to take, and I congratulate you once again, you said that you are supplying directly to the farmers. I hope and I uh, assume that your biopesticide is having registration of CIB and RC. A central, uh, you know, uh, insecticide, uh, you know, uh, uh, and uh, registration committee, uh, so that uh, you you have, uh, uh, you know, registration of that. And if you have uh, registration and you are doing that, perfectly all right. But what was I was more interested in is that how do we scale it up? How do we support organic agriculture? How do we substitute? Honorable Prime Minister, last year has given the call to reduce use of chemical fertilizers by 20%, 15 to 20%. So how do we really do that? Again, based on scientific evidences, my colleagues and friends, that if we can promote our organic uh, fertilizers and pesticides, biofertilizers uh, bio, uh, and biopesticides, and uh, we should be able to really reduce this uh, use of chemicals. Uh, you know, uh, to the extent possible, as I, as, as I said by Honorable Prime Minister, at least 20, 20%. I'm sure we have evidences to reduce chemical fertilizer use by use of microbial consortia, liquid biofertilizers to the extent of uh, even uh, 25%. So your in, our institute in MOU, uh, National Bureau of uh, Agricultural and, and uh, uh, Important Microbes have already demonstrated this in farmer's field and also uh, through systematic trials, and you will be also having such material. So see how best you can promote this. Licensing to a company is one way, but building your own entrepreneurs and seeing that the kind of uh, uh, demand in your uh, states and the demand is increasing and you can actually look at it and then see uh, that uh, building entrepreneurship uh, you know, uh, at your level and then promoting your own products so that would be very, very important. So that's another, uh, they are all action points for you, Honorable Vice-Chancellor. You have invited me. I am noting, sir. I am noting. I am not here just to praise you. 
yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know build some activities as action points so that uh, that would be helpful for all of us for the country sure. and sure. Uh, you know and in that direction we should be working i must appreciate another efforts of yours uh, that's all uh, you know kanpur dehat uh, as a kind of uh, nutri village system and uh, uh, the nutritionally enriched districts and uh, i really appreciate this because some uh, you know or maybe around 3 years ago uh, we uh, we decided that we should go for uh, some nutri villages and uh, in fact uh, honorable ms swaminathan was part of this concept this idea it was his idea and uh, suggestion that we should select three villages and one was selected uh, in uh, the uh, nearby area of uh, uh, you know your honorable chief minister and uh, one was selected from maharashtra and one from odisha so three villages were three districts were chosen three villages were chosen some studies were taken up uh, some visits were made and we are supposed to actually work together icmr indian council of medical research and indian council of agriculture research together we are supposed to really move faster in that direction uh, to grow uh, you know more of bio fortified crops more of nutri cereals more of uh, uh, diversified uh, nutri gardens uh, and in the process enhance consumption and eliminate malnutrition and in fact those villages were very carefully chosen based on data that uh, rampant uh, widespread malnutrition uh, prevails uh, in those in those villages so so now uh, after that you know uh, the uh, dg change at icmr Uh, you know of uh, put a break in that program but certainly you know uh, we are working we are progressing slow but that is uh, the idea but uh, now uh, you know all the institutions all the institutions should actually do this including our universities dr agarwal sir this could be a point of discussion in our vc conference that uh, how do we adopt one is uh, doubling farmers income i'll come to that point later but uh, uh, you know more than that you know this uh, nutri uh, villages is nutri village system uh, how do we en ensure that nutri gardens are there bio fortified crops are there diversified food system is there nutri cereals wherever feasible they are also being grown consumption is uh, changed consumption pattern is changed adequate literacy is built information is provided to the consumers and the farmers as well school children are adequately informed and educated and in complete adoption process we actually build these universities and uh, you know in another few years time to we'll transform them as as uh, nutri smart villages not climate smart villages climate smart villages we are already working on and we build this nutri smart village concept further strengthen is we have already built but uh, strengthen them further so Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Singh Sir, you say that uh, malnu malnutrition, uh, you know, malnourished uh, children have recovered. Yes. That's a statement. It's a profound statement. I repeat, it is a profound statement, and it has far-reaching implications. And I will be extremely happy to get this data. will provide how, yeah. how systematically it was designed yeah what was the baseline how many students were included in the study what all food they were given for how many days and what are the parameters observed and how we have improved upon the parameters and in fact i can assure you i will pass on that information to the office of the honorable prime minister Yes. Thank so, you. if you can provide me that, and that would be a beautiful example that by your intervention you have been able to improve upon the uh, health of the malnourished children, yeah. whether it is school children or is in the village system, whatever doesn't really matter. So, uh, I would be extremely happy to receive that note, yes. and with the details of analysis, it could be a brief note and also a detailed note, and that would be very very helpful. Yeah. with all details of the 
village and uh, location and then all that that would be very very useful for me yeah. and uh, you know if honorable prime minister gets impressed in fact you will also find those mentioned in uh, his expressions in various pura including you know man ki baat and uh, last time he talked about suket model of our uh, central agriculture university uh, at uh, samastipur uh, so so that is uh, what and uh, and uh, the the this is not just giving me but strengthening further your own activity what you are doing in, in this uh, particular uh, district and for this district your university should be globally recognized yes. globally recognized for your contribution for alleviating malnutrition you all know this is the sustainable development goal agenda to address malnutrition eliminate hunger by 2030 completely and if you can demonstrate this in this particular district that malnutrition is demolished it completely eliminated by way of your systematic engagement and involvement that would be great thing and that would be example for everybody in the country as well so please so work on that continue working on that and then Uh, giving uh, giving us information also uh, you know for our our aim to work on uh certainly in the vc saab you have said that uh, you have uh, you know 13 kvks 15 icrps and you have received almost 168 crores during past 5 uh, years and various things uh, you know through kvk through uh, icrps and all that and also So another 12 crores for the uh, development grants and education system, and almost 180 crores and all that. Uh, but then I know uh, certainly uh, we would, uh, uh, you know, I can understand, uh, you know, that would be certainly uh, other uh, technologies, uh, other uh, requirements uh, for building the developing technologies, and uh, you know, uh, all those ICR would be extremely happy uh, to provide, uh, you know, further support. and uh, you know uh, accreditation is essential component of it and you should not forget that yeah. and uh, we should not lowering the guard also in that respect and we should you should be continued to be a accredited university and at no point in time your uh, quality should be coming down so kindly ensure that so that there is accreditation and you continue getting uh, grants and uh, uh, also supports uh, from the icar uh and uh, you know again congratulations for successfully getting uh, the program under nahep national agriculture higher education project and uh, the uh, cast and you also said that you are building uh, smart classrooms and other things in the process and uh, that would provide a great support to the university uh, i do not know how much you have been given 20 25 crores whatever and uh, you know uh, what is the uh, amount but certainly it would be extremely helpful and i'm sure you would be able to take full advantage of this and uh, uh, your uh, engagement involvement would be essential uh, for uh, uh, you know providing support to the uh, activity under nahep and uh, you know procuring all the equipments and all that and building infrastructure would be very very important for the universities so please take care that uh, you know uh, you don't really lose out uh, on that uh, uh, you have in, improved your ranking and uh, you know i'm that's uh, very happy for that you have gone for 10 steps uh, you know rising in the ladder uh, in the ranking and that is something which is praise worthy and uh, your people are continuously working i appreciate but certainly you should be within the top 5 yeah. and you should be, you should be aspirational you should be aspiring for that and what is that uh, required to be in the top 5 or top 10 and uh, you know or if you are not there already in top 10 so what is required uh, you know you have improved ranking situation ranking uh, position but i believe uh, sky is the limit and continue stri- striving hard so that you go up further in the ladder and uh, you be there in the top 5 or at least to start with is top 10 and i'm sure with your efforts you should be able to uh, do this uh, agarwal sir 
when I was, uh, you know, talking and thinking about ranking. And recently, Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Education, Government of India released this NIRF ranking. And why we, our ranking cannot be released by Honorable Agriculture Minister? If you have already done it, and uh, you know, uh, we instead of waiting for the Vice Chancellor's Conference or ICR, uh, you know, uh, Foundation Day, uh, when it is done, we can have a separate meeting. Uh, we should be able to release this ranking. And since uh, they are not including agriculture universities and uh, you know, our dim universities in that ranking process, they were including earlier. And this time they are not included. We'll try for including these in the NIRF being done by uh, the Department of Education, Government of India. So <clears throat> none of our universities and deemed universities featured uh, there this time. So what is the region and where are the bottlenecks? Where are the problems? So if you can analyze and uh, we can write to Secretary of Education and then uh, you know, apprise him about the situation. And if required, we can also meet uh, the Honorable Minister of Education uh, uh, so also regarding this. Uh, so there are two suggestions. One, that uh, we should be included in the NIRF ranking, which is being done. Our university, our institute should be included. And uh, second, uh, we should be able to release our ranking uh, you know, by Honorable Agriculture Minister at some point in a separate function uh, to highlight the importance and uh, the things that we are doing. Ajadika uh, Amrut Mahotsab, we are uh, doing, there are several activities planned and I'm sure uh, your colleagues are becoming impatient and uh, my, might be becoming impatient to leave because it's already uh, 12 o'clock <laughs> and uh, I will finish it up. I thought I'll take lesser time, but uh, uh, you know, we are carrying out this and you are also doing some activities. And I believe those reports, if you can send to the Agrawal Saab and Dr. Eke Singh Saab, so, uh, uh, so that would be very, very useful. And we can actually reflect those. What is being done by your Dr. Agrawal Saab, we can have a separate report prepared. And what they are doing, uh, in addition to what we have earmarked, what the universities are doing under Rajadika Amrut Mahotsav. So, uh, so that would document document we can bring out separately that uh, the activities of universities uh, with regard to Ajadika Amrut Mahotsav. There are many good uh, programs happening and the mass campaigns should be happening at their own level. So let's bring out and write, uh, talk to the Honorable Vice Chancellors on uh, 28 and uh, we should be able to uh, you know, inform and get. So also uh, you should build a document, uh, Dr. Singh Saab, on uh, various activities of Ajadika Amrut Mahotsav. Okay. Uh, not only there has to be press coverage, there has to be in your website and uh, as much uh, coverage as possible and also as much contact as possible. So talk to the farmers as many as possible through Ajadika Amrut Mahotsav. And, uh, you know, build an atmosphere of academics in the university. So that's also important. So, uh, uh, so all these activities, what I'm suggesting, uh, you know, if you can, uh, spend time and get involved yourself. Uh, you can transform the university and you don't require too long a period to transform. You can transform the university uh, you know, uh, in whatever time is left for you. So kindly work on those. And Dr. Agrawal Saab, you know, uh, we can also discuss this, the faculty of gradation of universities. And uh, we do find quite a bit of inbreeding in the university. If we can collect all detailed information regarding, uh, you know, kind of faculty and how many are, of them are trained outside the university and uh, uh, the NARM training, the ICR uh, advanced center training or training abroad. Uh, what is that they have at this point in time? And in, in fact, if you have your database built around and we can plan very systematically for faculty upgradation, in the universities. Unless faculty is actually exposed and trained, we can't actually improve the quality of teaching in the universities. So we have to, under new education policy, this should be our target. And a national higher education project should also have some component of, uh, you know, we are sending faculty abroad, but uh, we have to see how long duration, at least six months duration faculty training abroad can also be 
part of this. And if it is part, then how we can distribute and from every university, at least some faculty get trained in the process at a central level. We build this program, not through their individual specific programs, wherever they are, they should be able to do that, but we can build this at the central manner and plan it properly. Of course, uh, implementers of new education policy, VC Saab, we will discuss in VC conference, and I'm sure you will be able to uh, do that and uh, you know, uh, provide uh, your support to the implementation of uh, the uh, new education policy. So uh, without going further, so we have taken quite a bit of time. I have taken quite a bit of time and uh, spoken uh, to you on various aspects. And there are many other issues to discuss about. I only focused on the items which you talked about yeah, yeah. and, uh, you know, uh, and uh, discuss them further. How can we uh, go further in those areas where you are already working? And uh, you, know, you mentioned about those. And I'm sure with the support of your faculty, uh, you would take this university to newer heights. And uh, uh, you know, without uh, you know, their support, you can't work. So always be positive. Always be helpful. Always consider the whole university as a single family and uh, take everybody along and uh, see, uh, you know, uh, interact with them as much as possible. Listen to them as much as possible. And so that you build a solid team for future and build also tomorrow's leadership at the university. It should not be rudderless. It should not be having vacuum. So build tomorrow's leadership at the university. So with these words, and I would also urge all my colleagues from the university who are attending, you know, you should also extend all the supports to the vice chancellor. And uh, you know, personally goes and uh, jealousy and all that uh, we should leave behind. We are human beings, they're all there in us. And unless we keep them submissive, uh, we cannot contribute to a common good, uh, to the university benefits. We can't, and uh, we would be selfish rather. So, so if you are forthcoming, if you are providing support, and if you are working in the spirit of a uh, teamwork, so you would be able to really do better, contribute better. And that is what I would expect from all the faculty and all the staff uh, who are associated with this program today. So uh, 20 people have left. If I speak more, there will be further depletion. So I, uh, once again, thank you, Dr. D.R. Singh for inviting me. And uh, Dr. Agrawal Saab, it's a good thing to be uh, there, to be uh, together. So thank you very much and wish you all the very best. We stop here. Respected sir, thank you very much for such a thought-provoking address which have given us all many